producers here so often, they're stuck with two options. One is beg and pray that you'll get equity, which even if you have all your elements, there's still a huge element of luck. Option two is you go to a multinational streamer and first of all, it's hard enough to get a deal there, but if you do, the multinational streamer does your movie, you effectively just become a glorified gun for hire. You're a service producer in effect. Maybe you earn some good money on it, that keeps your lights on for two years, but you don't own anything. Let us dig into this financing system that uh, we've got here so that we can really explore how the genre powerhouse XYZ, so to speak, is building global competitive slate of genre bending productions backed by Finnish Venture, among other things, and pension funds, and we're going to go dig into this. But first of all, let, let us um, go into what is your take um, on the financial models from the US and from the European system, on a, on a meta level, not meaning metaverse, meta level, right? Hello. Um, there are ultimately two very speak right models. into the microphone. Yeah, two very different models. In, I guess what we'd call the Anglo-American model, the traditional: you come to Cannes, you pre-sell, you bank these pre-sales, you shoot the film in a tax credit state, and then you find some financier to cover your gap. This Anglo-American model is, I wouldn't quite say dead, but it's very, very difficult. These days, it really only works for a small amount of movies that are either cast driven or they have some certain elements that allow it to come together. Right. In Europe, by contrast, we have these great funding systems, which we're very grateful for. But the issue ultimately there as well is these systems are, they're kind of more geared towards supporting les films du grand public. You know, the, the, the rom-com with Jean Dujardin or Til Schweiger or whatever, right? Because yeah. The theory Mainstream is, stuff. Yeah, the theory is, look, that's what people go to the cinema for. They want to watch the same rom-com they've seen 50 times, right? The problem with this is what slips through the cracks is a lot of the kinds of movies we work on. And, and so everything I'll say now will come from my perspective, which is working in the genre space, which is, to me, that's action, sci-fi, horror, and thriller. And these films, if you take the European perspective, they might not be the films most geared towards, say, the local French box office or local German box office or whatever, but they're ironically the films that can travel the best because they're not local by nature. They tell global stories. They might have nuances, which makes the movie interesting. Mm -hmm. let, let me ask briefly in the audience, who is coming from the genre perspective here? I would be curious to see. Okay, that's quite a few. But anyway, what, what you're saying is also replicatable for um, other kind of movies anyway. So go on, sorry. Yeah, and so my point is that the American model for this is tough, as we'll get into. The European model, even if you get lots of soft money, you still have a very healthy gap in your finance plan, which is really hard to cover. So producers here so often, they're stuck with two options. One is beg and pray that you'll get equity, which even if you have all your elements, there's still a huge element of luck. Option two is you go to a multinational streamer and first of all, it's hard enough to get a deal there, but if you do, the multinational streamer does your movie, you effectively just become a glorified gun for hire. You're a service producer in effect. Maybe you earn some good money on it, that keeps your lights on for two years, but you don't own anything, right? That, that's an interesting, interesting uh, hypothesis. I would like to know in the audience, as I do not have the Votemo technology now to interfere with you, I would like to know, do you agree with this perspective on how these, the funds are structured? I would like to know who is really like agreeing on this and saying like, yes, that's the way it is. Quite a few. Who strongly disagree, really? I mean, strongly disagree about this hypothesis? Okay, thank you very much. Okay, Maxim, we can go on. I think we have a, a sort of a, a addition to your to your thing. So, where um, does this uh, lead us to? What choice do, do we have now? Um, we, can we combine systems? Yes, um, I wouldn't say. I mean, I'm sure there are many solutions, and I'm not a genius. But I think one of the the solutions that works for us, and I think this is the one I want to talk about, is I guess what I call like a transatlantic model 
where you cherry pick the best of both worlds. An example would be your movie is still rooted in Europe. A lot of your talent, let's say your filmmaker, maybe your writer, everyone behind the camera, you post, you physically produce in Europe, you therefore access European funds, but you work with an American partner to do effectively two things. One is navigate the agency system to bring an actor or two, an actor or two who can provide global recognition for the movie and therefore Americanize it in that sense and therefore access a greater market. And secondly, US distribution is still by far the largest revenue stream for any kind of globally minded movie. And so you can bring on a partner to either help sell that for you, in which case you can use that modeling to raise your own financing, or you you know, you pre-sell of sorts, you know, with a domestic buyer who in the US will therefore bring that little extra that will close your gap. I mean, the second thing to dovetail into what happened today, then maybe a new European fund could come along, as one did today, that might help close that gap too, but it's yeah. not mutually exclusive. For you, this way is enabling European creativity and also business model to be hybridized, so to speak, or, um, with also creative assets from the states, but also the distribution system from the states. Right? So it's, a, it's an interesting mix. Well, I mean, that's why my criticism of the European system is it has created a culture of complacency and always creating the same boring thing when Europe has plenty of talent. There's so many talented filmmakers and having this hybrid model where you apply an American risk profile to what could still be at its core European, I think will actually galvanize and generate more exciting content from Europe, you know, and not have us live in this dreaded circle of, yes, we get this great government money, but it's geared towards the same boring stuff, you know? We used to make great things 30 years ago.